Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Greetings, my name is Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at the Roswell United Methodist Church. Thanks for tuning in and for being a part of this time of worship. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, chapter 17, verses one through seven. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, according to the command of the Lord, and camped at Rephdim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you want to quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. So then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people, and take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile and go. And behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he named the place Massah and Meribah because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? May God's blessing be upon our reading and hearing and understanding of his word. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the way in which it mirrors and reflects our thoughts and uh, ideas, and also, God, for the way in which it instructs us and guides us and help us, helps us to see things in different lights and better lights. Guide us today as we look at this passage and as we consider your spirit at work in our hearts. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, as we're recording this service today, it's uh, World Communion Sunday. And so uh, World Communion Sunday was enacted years ago, and it's an interdenominational 
endeavor to try to bring churches together one Sunday a year to celebrate communion and recognize we live in a world, uh, a diverse world of different denominations and places and cultures, and, and that the gospel of Christ can and should bring us together. Uh, and so in that backdrop, we look at this scripture passage uh, today. And so it, it represents a great question, I think. Where is God in all of this? As we look out across our world, that's a great question. In our scripture today, the question is, where is God when we are led to a land with no water? But the larger question is for uh, each of us in our own circumstances uh, and is reflected through scripture and through history. Jesus, when he was on the cross, cried out to God, my God, where, where are you? Elijah in the Old Testament Kings uh, has a servant who comes to him as they're preparing for a battle the next day and the servant feels like they're outnumbered 10 to one and wants to know if there is any hope for them. And he says, where is God? And then Elijah shows him all the angels on the mountainside. The Old Testament kings are constantly asking the prophets as they prepare for a task or an event, is God going to be with us in this endeavor? They wanted to know that. John Wesley, early in his ministry, ran into roadblocks that caused him to ask, is God with me? Abraham Lincoln, in his second inaugural address to the nation, uh, as it was in the midst of the Civil War, asked the question, is God with us or has God left while we fight this terrible fight? Is God with us? That's a question that we ponder sometimes. Around the world today, people are facing that question as they face enormous challenges. Where is God in the midst of famine, in the midst of flood, earthquakes, chaos, war? Is God in those events and places? Well, Moses is addressing this. He's trying to help folks find an answer. So let's get back to Moses in this story in, uh, in Exodus. Moses is a reluctant leader. He didn't ask for the job. He didn't campaign for the job. He didn't run for office. He didn't get elected. He was tapped by God. Uh, and after Moses tried every way he could to get out of the job, God finally got Moses to take the job. But he hadn't really been happy, it doesn't appear, with the job. One of the reasons is because God has asked Moses to lead this people of Israel but God hasn't always been really forthcoming with uh, an agenda. He doesn't sit down with Moses at the beginning of the week and say, here's what's going to happen this week. Moses is often caught off guard, trying to answer for God, but not being God, and trying not to throw God under the bus when the people come screaming and hollering at him. God wants Israel to follow him. It's the same Request that Jesus makes when he comes on the scene in the New Testament to the disciples and to everybody else. Follow me. Follow me. But Jesus nor God have always been great about laying out plans. So for those of us who really need that uh, to be sane, struggle. Struggle with this trust and with this idea of faith. It'd be easier to have faith and have trust if we knew a little bit of where we're going and what's going to happen. So, in our passage, uh, Moses is confronted by an angry crowd. And it's no wonder they're angry. They're tired. They're anxious. They've been traveling all day. They've put all of their eggs in this Exodus basket. They're out in the middle of the desert. They're not always sure what's about to take place. And so now, after journeying for days, they get to a place, begin to camp, and they realize there's no water. No water. So the people are venting. 
It's been a lot. They turn to Moses because Moses is the leader. He's the face of God for them. He's the only one they really can vent to. I think it's just the price of leadership. It's sure the price today. So many people feel across the world disconnected from the decision makers at the tops of organizations, schools, churches, governments, communities, state institutions, uh, uh, groups that govern the world. And the question is, what do we do with our grievances? What do we do? Who do we ask a question of? How do we get an answer? How do we gain influence? How do we become confident and trusting in the direction of things? I was talking to a couple of folks in different circumstances, but the same sort of uh, challenge they were facing. Both were in large companies that had recently uh, uh, downsized, let go, fired a number of employees. But they're scratching their head because they know that the profits of those companies over the last couple of years has been astronomical. And they have also noticed that nobody at the top of the organization is being downsized. In fact, they're all getting significant bonuses. It just doesn't add up. What's going on and where do we turn for answers when we're frustrated? And that's the place the, the people of Israel are at. They're in this desert, they've journeyed, they've come to this place, there's no water. And so whose fault is that? Where do they turn? Uh, how do they get water? What's going to happen? They want an answer. And it's a fair question. It's a great question. When you look out and you see that something's wrong to say, hey, what's going on? Because all of us get anxious. We have questions. We're not sure. And so we look for a sign we want to have hope, we want to have trust, we want to believe, we want to have faith, but we need a sign. And so Moses can po point to the signs that they've recently had, the crossing of the Red Sea and the plagues in Egypt, but that was weeks ago. What about today? What about today? What about right now? You know, sometimes the platitudes of Scripture don't, don't always help. Somebody might say, well, think of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and God will direct your path. Well, that's great to say, but when you're standing in a land with no water, is it really helpful? So what does that actually even mean for the folks who were there? Does it mean that they just sit and wait? Something will turn up. Or do they go out and start digging, do something on their own, hoping that God will bless whatever it is that they do? Maybe they complain, which a lot of them did. Maybe they start to panic, which is the natural progression of these things. And then maybe some begin to rebel, and you hear that sentiment in the scripture that we read, which is also the natural progression when we're anxious, afraid, fearful. So what would a conversation in the desert have been like? I'm not sure, that's not recorded, but maybe it went something like this. Hey, where are we going? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let, let's just wait and see. Well, have you seen any water all day? <laughs> um, no, not really. But I'm sure that Moses knows what he's doing. Well, I'm, I'm not so sure. I hope you're right, though. Well, you know, you just need to have more faith. You have to trust that God is guiding him. You know, is it me, or are we getting further into the desert? Nothing in this geography suggests that there's water anywhere nearby. We can't just keep following this guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. Isn't that plain to everybody? 
Hey, well, do you have a better idea? Somebody has to do something. Who's with me? We need to take matters into our own hands. We are going to all die out here if we don't do something. You know, you, you've probably been part of a conversation like that, where you begin to have questions and doubts, and with all the things all around us, those conversations are happening more and more. So many things seem to be falling apart. When we look across the world, my goodness, is God with us? Is God in all of this mess? You know, the, the really interesting thing about this Scripture passage is that as they're having this argument, the water is right there. <laughs> It's just under the surface. They can't see it with their eyes. And so often in life, that's the thing. We can't see with our eyes what's happening, what's about to happen, what's going to happen. Uh, we don't like being followers. We like being leaders. We like being in charge and figuring everything out and telling everybody else what to do. But to follow God is hard. It's, it's a little messy. Uh, doesn't always happen the way we would want it to happen. So the water is right there, and Moses, with his staff, has the tool to unlock the water, release the water. He just doesn't know the spot to put his staff down. You know, and it's interesting that in the New Testament, same thing happens, same story, just told in different ways. Jesus comes on the scene, and the first thing he says to everybody is, follow me. And they say, where are we going? It's our need to have a plan, to be a part of the discussion, to be part of the planning process. And Jesus says, just, just follow me. And that's hard for folks. It's hard for me, and I'm sure it's hard for you just to follow, just to have that kind of trust. But in Jesus' day, the same thing happened to Jesus that's happening to Moses here. People begin to turn. People begin to have questions. Uh, without the next miracle of the day, people get distracted. John the Baptist, after baptizing Jesus, sort of goes off stage. But he sends word to Jesus to say, is it really you? Are you the one? Is it you? And the disciples on the boat, tossing and turning in the middle of the waves, summoned Jesus from his nap and asked the same question. Are you with us? Is it really you? Can we trust you? And in the days after the resurrection, Thomas hears the story. He processes it somehow, but still in defiance says, but... Is it really him? And now that, that that's kind of sums up our struggle, doesn't it? Is it really you? Can we trust? Being a follower is messy, as, as we've already said. We aren't in charge. Who's to say why God led those folks to this land with no visible water? Who's to say? We mentioned earlier that this week, as we're recording it, is World Communion Sunday. And the communion liturgy reminds us that God is faithful. It reminds us that we go astray, we, we get distracted, go off this way and that way, but God is always faithful. Now. God being faithful doesn't mean that God always does things in our timing. And it acknowledges that it it's, takes some work to be faithful, trusting people. But that's, that's part of what we do in communion, is we come forward and reaffirm and affirm our faith. That we sometimes go astray and we stand in need of, of the grace of God. That that grace is given not because we deserve it, but because that's who God is. 
the communion service and World Communion Sunday reminds us that the water we need is just under the surface. That God is guiding us, that God holds us in his arms and in his hands. Let us pray. God, it's, it's a natural sort of thing to want more than, than sometimes we really can get. Um, we want assurance. We want security. We want to be free from fear. We want to know that you're with us. And sometimes the things of the world get us distracted. Sometimes we listen to the chatter of people who are more anxious than faithful. And sometimes we can't see with our own eyes what exactly is taking place. And so we get anxious. As we come for communion, as we celebrate this World Communion Sunday, we take comfort in being reminded that, that you are faithful, that the communion liturgy has, a, has your spirit stamped on it to remind us that you're always with us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.